Let's have a look at the relationship between parents and children in Angular 2. In Angular 1, we used to use event in order to create communications between parents and children. In Angular 2, we're going to use input and output. So let's go here in the home. We're going to create a child.component.ts. Here, we're going to generate an empty component here I'm going to fix this because my generator isn't awesome we're going to change the name for a selector to child the template is going to be very simple just a value and some text to display here we go we're going to export this class we're going to name it child, very simple. After that, we're going to go here. We're going to import input from Angular Core. We're going to use this input. And we're going to name it value to make it more simple. And we're expecting a string. Now in on the component, we're going to import our child from child.component here we go we're going to say that we got some directives now our directive is gonna be child perfect now in on the template dot html we're going to go here and create our child directive we're going to use our input here which is going to be value since we are setting a value we're going to use those type of brackets here it's waiting for a variable but we're not going to pass a variable we're just going to pass a string to make it more simple we pass test as a string and we save and we reload it and we got our directive, which got this value set through our out input. Fun, there's another way to use input in child. Instead of doing this, we can just kill it and declare our input here as an array with inputs. We're going to pass just the name of this input. It's going to be value. And as you can see, when we reload, we have the same solution. So we're going to see at the end which one is better. Better, because both are great. So now that we got our input done, there's another way to handle this input, we can say that we're going to have a name value that we pass through home.component here. And we can change the name that we're going to handle internally in our component. So here we do just new name, for example. We reload it. And as you can see, nothing is working. So we go to um, the template here. My bad. We go to child component. We have value and we replace it by new name. So the rule here is to say that internal name here and external name here. So if you want to do this with, with the decorator, you can go here, do input small hem and here we're gonna pass the external name value and here the internal name string and reloading and that's it you got your input here so that's the two ways to handle inputs 
We have just seen how to communicate from parent to child using input. Now let's communicate from child to parent by using output to emit events. So we're going to go back to our child component here. We're going to import output and event emitter. We're going to create here an output with this decorator. We're going to name it called parent and it's a new event emitter. We're going to use ng on init in order to trigger this event. So we need to implement on init here and to import on init here. And in this ng on init, we're going to trigger this dot call parent dot emit. And we're going to pass here, very important, an object. We're going to name it value. And we're just going to pass test. Then we go back to home.template.html. We're going to create here our event, which is called parent. When this event is triggered by the child, we're going to trigger a function which is named parent called and we're going to pass dollar event. Then we go back to our home component and we create our function parent called. Here we go. We got an event and we are just going to log our event and that's it very simple we just reload it we got the logs and we got an object with value and test so for outputs you can also do this in order to change the name so we're gonna pass a new name let's call it let's call it new name Two. So new name two is gonna be the name that you pass here in um dot template. New name two, the external name. So as you can see, we're gonna have the logs here coming back, and just like before, you can say that you don't want to have this decorator. You prefer to have here outputs in component so just create an array here this array is gonna be first internal name which is gonna be called parent and external name which was new name two so now we reload and we got our object here so the debate is do we use decorators or do we use arrays like here, outputs and inputs in component? And of course, the answer is it depends. If you only have one or two inputs, outputs, it's great to use decorators because decorators has been submitted to the JavaScript standards. So it's kind of nice to have that, which won't change in the future, instead of putting this into a component which is specific to Angular 2. So it's more maintainable. But let's say that you got 20 outputs. Are you going to write a lot here or just this syntax or input? It can be very troublesome if you have many of those types. So if you got many inputs, I would go with VRA because it's fast. And if you don't have a lot, just go with decorators. And that's it. This is how you communicate between parent and child in Angular 2.